Hi pals, hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some underrated book recommendations. So I stuck out a poll on, or like a, not poll, a question sticker box on Instagram asking for some video requests and a couple of people sent in their request for underrated books. So I thought this would be a perfect video to film today and um, I have quite a lot of books to talk to you about so I'm going to kind of go through them at quite a pace so that I can speak about them all without making the video ridiculously long but I do just want to say how I kind of selected them as underrated. So for me an underrated book is one that like genuinely not many people have listened like read um, because sometimes I think that um, I can think something's underrated and then I go on to like a Goodreads or a Storygraph and actually it has a lot of reviews and it's just not talked about in the circles that I am in in the book community. Um, so I wanted to kind of base my recommendations off of books I know genuinely don't have a lot of ratings on Goodreads and don't have a lot of reviews and so I capped like the books on this so all of them have less than a thousand ratings on Goodreads. Um, I would say there's quite a mix of genres, mix of um, I've got like even graphic novels, a couple of graphic novels in here. Mostly they're books, mostly they're novels. But yeah, I have a kind of mix of different things on the list. I've got my laptop here in front of me and um, I'm just going to kind of go through them and talk to you about them as we go. And I will run through them as well in descending order. So I'll start with the one with the most ratings and then we'll finish with the one with the least ratings. So the most underrated book according to me um, and none of these as well were published in 2021 so they've all had a bit of time on the market to kind of get reviews and get a bit of attention um, and it's not just that they don't have reviews because they are brand new books. So let's just get into this and get started. The first book on this list is Home by Amanda Bar Berryman. Um, it's a difficult read, it's about a young girl and she's living with her mum and her little brother and they they are living in what is effectively poverty, um, living a really difficult lifestyle and mum is trying really hard to keep things afloat but there's a lot of difficult things um, going on in our young narrator's life. I think this is a great one for fans of My Name is Leon which is a cracking book um, but I read Home a couple of years before I read My Name is Leon and I think this is brilliant as well and would really recommend it. It's difficult reading, it does cover themes of kind of child abuse etc so kind of go in with knowing that that's the kind of topic area but it is a brilliant read and kind of shines a light on some topics which are less often discussed so I would definitely recommend that one. The next one is The Lost Lights of St Kilda by Elizabeth Gifford. This is a historical fiction it's kind of set in I think it's 1920s St Kilda in Scotland which is an island in Scotland if you don't know and um, which it was at one point habited by people but um, is no longer. It's completely uninhabited and um, deserted and I think if you visit there what I believe you, go, you can go and see is the kind of remains of everyday life that was in St Kilda and I think the author went there and learned about the history and has based this story off of it which I really really like um, and it's kind of like a love story and it's about this couple who met on St Kilda and then the man goes away to fight in the war and meanwhile the the villagers that are in St Kilda they have to depart the island to go to the mainland of Scotland mostly because of difficulties with getting food to the island, difficulties with the actual reality of living on St Kilda, not really a choice more of a kind of necessity um, and so I found that really really interesting because I, I didn't know that about St Kilda, I didn't know enough about St Kilda really um, and I liked learning about that through this story but I also just enjoyed the love story unfolding, it's quite a slow pace, slow burn story um, but there's kind of quite a lot going on at the same time so I did enjoy it and would really recommend it. It only has 880 ratings on Goodreads. The next book on this list is XX by Angela Chadwick. This is a dystopian novel in which um, embryo to embryo technology, no ovum to ovum technology sorry, has just been developed and that offers women the opportunity to have children without the need for men at all. No need for um, the male part in making a baby, shall we say. Um, and so this causes a real stir. You know, a lot of people are like, 
the end of men, kind of the end of the world as we know it. At the centre of this novel, there is a, a female-female couple who are one of the first people to try this technology. And it gets out to the press that they are, that it's them, and it follows their everyday life as they cope with all this pressure, all this media attention. Um, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really kind of gripping and interesting and just thinking about like the possibilities of science um I really really enjoyed that as well um really brilliant read I think it won the Polari Prize in 2019 but it still only has 930 ratings on Goodreads so definitely still kind of underhyped I think it could definitely do with a bit more love and I think a lot of people would like it if they picked it up I then have a memoir which is All of Me by Kim Noble I think I've talked about this book quite a few times on this channel um but I don't know that I've ever actually fully reviewed it on my Instagram or anything. I think I read it before I joined Bookstagram. Um, but this is a memoir about Kim Noble and Kim Noble has Dissociative Identity Disorder or DID which basically um, means that she has several alters who all kind of come to the fore at different times and usually DID if you don't know anything about it is kind of developed as a coping mechanism for trauma, a way to cope um, with difficult life experiences. Your brain um, compartmentalizes and part of that, I don't know everything, I don't know a lot, I'm not an expert on this subject, but part of that is that different alters um, form within the body. And um, Kim Noble has, I think, about 20 different personalities, some men, some women, um, some children, different different people who have different personalities and they are fully formed personalities and fully formed um, alters within Kim's system. Um, and yeah, I think it was just a really, really interesting introduction to the to DID as a condition and to understand that a bit more. Um, and I've since read different things about this. But this book came out in 2011 and only has 855 review, uh, ratings, sorry. Um, and I think that's just, it's just so underrated. Like, I really think a lot more people would really enjoy this. I discovered it via the High Low, the podcast. Um, Dolly Alderton and her co-host, whose name has totally slipped my mind, talked about it there and I was really intrigued by it and picked up and was not disappointed, really enjoyed it. The next book is one that I read recently. It is by Ellen Willows, it's called Inlands and it's translated by Duncan J. Lewis. It's about a young woman who moves from Stockholm to be with her partner in the north of Sweden. And um, when she moves there, they break up almost immediately. I'm talking like the first chapter of the book, these two have broken up. It's really quite um, abrupt. And she decides to stay on in this small town, in this sort of village place. And it's about kind of her adjustment. Her experience of culture shock was quite a big part of the book. And her kind of difficulties that she faced on an everyday basis in this small town, it's told in sort of short, vignettes I think you would call them and um, very short kind of passages and kind of snippets of her life and they don't feel connected they feel, feel pretty fragmented but they gradually build an overall narrative um, which is just really just really well done I thought it was really clever it's very slice of life very like an everyday story and um, I really really enjoyed it it came out at the start of 2020 and has 811 ratings. Okay, this next one is one that I think is one of these books that really doesn't really fit in a specific genre, which is why I think it's underrated. Um, but it's The Butchers by Ruth Gilligan. I liked Ruth Gilligan's other novel as well. I know that um, she's published a few novels, but her other one, Nine Folds Make a Paper Swan, I think that's what it's called, um, was really good as well. But I think I preferred The Butchers and I'm really excited to see what Ruth Gilligan comes out with next. This is set in Ireland um, and it's sort of part historical fiction, part mystery thriller, part just literary fiction, um, really engaging book. It's kind of filled with folklore and mythology. Um, you're kind of left thinking, is this, did this really happen? It starts with a photograph hung on a gallery wall um, depicting a sort of very strange graphic, graphic scene from rural Ireland and the picture is of a meat hook which is kind of suspended from the ceiling and from that, um, from its kind of point, a lifeless body hangs and this is a photograph and we kind of try to figure out, I guess that's how you'd say it, you kind of try to figure out the origins of this picture. Um, really, really interesting book. It's like, unlike anything else I've ever read, I thought it was brilliant. But I think because it doesn't fit neatly into a certain genre, that's why 
people maybe don't really know what to expect going in. It's hard to describe it after you've read it. So it's hard to kind of promote it to other people and kind of um, almost like say you should read this because how do you tell somebody that there's all these different genres and all these different things going on. But um, I really loved it um, and really would recommend it. It came out again right at the start of 2020 and it's got 781 ratings. The next book on this list is a graphic novel. It's Uncomfortably Happily by Yon Seek Hong and translated by Helen Jo um, and it's a story about two people, a couple, who move to the outskirts of the city. They are based within Seoul and they are moved to the outskirts of the city and it's kind of their adjustment to this new lifestyle. It sort of follows the husband's sort of descent into mental ill health really and the way that kind of creeps up on him. Um, but there's also these really beautiful moments between them, which I just thought were so beautifully captured and kind of realized in the illustrations. Really like the art style. I don't have a flip from the inside, I don't think, but the art style on the cover is quite true to what's inside. So um, yeah, I really, really like that. It's published by Drawn and Quarterly, and it was published in 2017, but it only has 663 ratings. The next book is YA. I told you this, this list would be very varied. This is YA. Um, it's called Rosie Loves Jack and it's by Mel Darbon. And this is a really nice, sweet, sweet story about Rosie who has Down syndrome and she loves Jack. She loves him. And so when they break up, she takes it really, really hard and she goes to find him. She wants to find him and make things right. And Jack is her sunshine. Um, and so she wants to find her sunshine again. And she goes on this sort of quest to find him. And she travels all the way across Brighton alone. And um, she is just really besotted with Jack and wants to find him and be reconnected. And she really faces some really difficult and unpleasant experiences on her travels. It's a difficult read, it's, it's difficult, but ultimately it is a sweet love story. Um, so yeah, it's. I think the inspiration the author talks about comes from um, her brother who has Down syndrome. That's the kind of inspiration in a way for the story. Um, but yeah, it was really beautiful and um, I really appreciated it. It was published in 2018 and has 677 ratings. The next book is Remembered by Yvonne Battle Felton. Uh, this is a story about a woman who is on the slave plantations in America, uh, Philadelphia. It's 1910 and we follow her um, experiences and just it's really a difficult read. There's, there's no doubt about that. It's really, really hard reading and I think that might be why some people are put off reading it and I can totally understand that. Um, quite graphic content and definitely check content warnings if you need them. But I thought it was really beautiful, incredible. Um, Yvonne's Battlefelton's uh, writing style is just incredible. I feel like it's one of those books where you get totally swept up in it and you don't even realise that three hours have passed and you've been stuck in this narrative. Um, so in terms of storytelling, in terms of writing, just such a beautiful writer. Um, and yeah, I really appreciated it. I thought it was difficult reading, but I'm really, really glad that I did read it. I think this got nominated for the Jalak Prize. Um, maybe in 2020. Um, it came out in 2019, August 2019. It's published by Dialogue Books in the UK. It has 669 ratings. Now for a real oldie. So this might not have the ratings because I don't know how long Goodreads has existed, um, but it's certainly a really quite backlist title, published in 1995 according to Goodreads. Um, and that is Burning Bright by Helen Dunmore. This is my first Helen Dunmore that I've read and so far my only, it's Burning Bright. I have a short story collection um, by Helen Dunmore to read, uh, still sitting back in Scotland, I think it's half read and I was, it was one of those ones where um, it got left behind when we moved here. Um, but this was a book that I actually picked up from a book sale in the library on the Westman Islands and um, I picked it up for I think like 30 krona or something. It was like really really cheap. No I think it was 50 krona or something. I just it was really really cheap and I was drawn to it. I thought it was quite interesting. Uh, looking the premise sounded interesting. It's a very slim novel and we follow Nadine, a 16 year old girl who goes to live 
in London and is set up with a in a house by her lover, her um, romantic interest. Kai, I think is their name, and there's a woman who lives in this house with them, or um, and she kind of gives a warning to say, like, you know, be careful to Nadine, and we follow the kind of unfurling of that situation, and what happens when Kai's true intentions are revealed to Nadine, and what that kind of means, and, and the effect that it has on, on Nadine, and I think it's just a really good story about being a young woman, and um, how vulnerable you can be, as in that situation and it's a story about vulnerability and um, how easy it is to take advantage of younger people and how important it is to kind of educate people truly and honestly about the dangers that you can face at that age. It really um, stays with me that story and um, yeah I really really appreciate Helen Dunmore's writing and the story that they chose to tell. It's also a funny one because it's one of those books where I remember everything about my reading experience. I read it on the bus home from the Westman Islands and when I got home non-stop I just couldn't put the book down. It was so gripping um, and I think it's really interesting when you can always like you can almost picture yourself sitting there reading a book um, because the reading experience was so visceral and intense like that. But yeah definitely one I'd recommend. It was published in 1995 as I and has 529 ratings. The next on this list is The Louder I Will Sing by Lee Lawrence. Now this was shortlisted for the Costa Awards but still doesn't have as many ratings as I would necessarily like to see it have. It does have an average point rating of 4.55 um, but that's from 420 ratings. I know I gave this five stars, thought it was brilliant. It's the story of Lee Lawrence and his mother um, who is shot in a police raid on their home and um, she ends up with um, disabilities which um, affect all of their lives for the future and it's about Lee Lawrence's quest for justice and for recognition of the harm that was done. He wants the police to take accountability for it and he also wants to create change within the police. He wants to reform what the police do and um, make it so that it doesn't happen to somebody else. It's interesting because I later learned, like when I read this I really felt like you could hear Lee Lawrence's voice, like it was as if he was speaking to you. Um, and then I later learned that actually Lee Lawrence um, verbally wrote this book, so he wrote it via, um, what would you call that, dictaphone, um, and then somebody typed it out. And I thought it was fascinating because you can really feel it in the book, and I think it is a positive thing. I think it really makes you feel like somebody is telling you their personal story um, and for that reason I also think it would work really well as an audiobook um, because of that kind of real kind of oral storytelling thing and um, yeah Lee Lawrence has a really nice way of telling his story. It came out in 2020 at the end of 2020 in September and as I say it has 420 ratings. The next book on this list is set in Nigeria. It is Easy Motion Tourist by Leigh Adenle. It's a really really gripping book with a really interesting, engaging, uh, endearing I guess in some ways. It's sort of very powerful um, female, strong female lead character um, and somebody who has kind of stuck with me all this time. Her name is Amaka and um, she is sort of running this, um, how would you describe it, like a kind of tech service for sex workers to kind of make sure that they are safe um, and kind of offer an option for safety and to, they can kind of text her, this is a client, this is who I'm going with and then if they disappear she is able to kind of trace them and creates like is it safe is it not safe they can text her and kind of tell the person's details if it's a new client and they can say whether or not that is safe and um, to go with them or whether or not you should leave because that's somebody who's kind of red marked on her database as somebody who is dangerous to sex workers um really really interesting premise for a story and you, so you have Amica's perspective and then you have another perspective where it's like kind of more like the gang side of things. There is a mutilated body that's found in the street and um, I think you have the British 
guy's perspective who stumbles upon that. He's like, I think he's a reporter. And then you also have the perspective of the guy who is picked up for that crime and um, accused of that crime. And yeah, you follow all these different perspectives and it kind of creates this really lively, full account of, um, of the city and of kind of what's going on in this world and almost like underworld, almost kind of like very interesting portrait of of that and yeah really thought it was brilliant and really want to pick up the sequel it's like a, a duology and this is the first one in the series it came out in 2016 and has 373 ratings the next one is an anthology which i think is really underrated in the sense that not many people have read it so it's common people it's this anthology of working class writers i don't think i've ever mentioned it on this channel and i think i might have only mentioned it once on bookstagram um, and i really Really, really loved it. It's published by Unbound, which is like a kind of crowdfunding publisher in the UK. So there's all kinds of different writing and um, it's very varied in that sense and all of them are working class and from the UK. Recently there's also been published by Unbound again, um, an anthology of Irish working class writers. I think it's called The 32. And given I had enjoyed Calm People so much, I actually backed that one. So I think back in Scotland, there is a copy of that waiting for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would really recommend this. It's got quite a lot of big names in it. Damien Barr, Mallory Blackman, um, Louise Doughty, uh, Chris McCrudden, Kit Duval a lot of different writers that you probably recognise and some who you might not but I discovered a lot of new authors to discover and check out and follow on social media through the anthology and I really rated it. Um, I gave it five stars. Um, it was published in 2019 and it has 350 rating. The next one is a graphic novel. It's called The Blue Road, A Fable of Migration. Um, it's by Wayne, De Com Wayne Compton and April Delanoche Milne um, and it's it's a story about a girl called Lacuna who doesn't have a family or a past or a home. She lives alone and she migrates essentially and it's about her experiences of trying to find a place to call home. It's also about the way that immigrants are treated in society and the way that in a lot of societies they're treated as second-class citizens. Um, I thought it was really beautiful and um, really interesting as well and I think that it was very clever the way it was kind of executed because it kind of does a lot more showing than telling and I really like that. It's also very beautifully illustrated um, and I definitely rated it for that. It's just short, it's only 128 pages. I read it on ebook format. The kind of cover art I would say is quite true to the kind of style inside. I can still visually picture quite a few of the scenes from the book. Um, and they've really kind of stayed with me um, and yeah I would really recommend it. It was published in 2019 and it has 327 ratings. The next book is The Age of Skin. It's another, not anthology but a collection of essays this time and it's really interesting and engaging and really thought-provoking. I found myself really sitting with a lot of the essays and really thinking about them, analysing them. It's one of the only times I've really ever felt compelled to kind of underline in my books and um, there was just so many things I wanted to think about and um, ruminate on and really just yeah just really spend time with. There were some, I, I preferred the first kind of part of the collection I think to the second part. Some of the second part became kind of strayed away from the first uh, section but I think that they are ordered in the publication date of when they were originally published as essays in newspapers and different kind of um, I don't know if they're published in journals and things as well. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting. Translated from the Croatian. I thought it was fantastic. I think that more people should read it. It, it had a lot of interesting thoughts about kind of like political systems and the way that the societies are run and stuff like that, which I thought was really interesting. A lot of interesting thoughts about immigration as well, especially European immigration. There was a little bit, um, my, my only real issue with it is that some of the essays kind of erased the experiences of um, Native American people. And I think my reading of it was that it, it was quite sort of erasing of, of their experiences and I didn't really rate that. And I feel like the author should have been a bit more sensitive to that and more kind of aware of that. But that could just have been my reading of it as well. I'm not sure, I haven't seen other people bring that out in the collection when they when they review it. It does have a 4.22 average rating, so it's quite high, but it only has 183 
ratings in general um, and it came out of the tail end of last year. Another Unbound title which I think is definitely worth a read is Stim, an Autistic Anthology and that's edited by Lizzie Huxley-Jones. I really really enjoyed this. It's a really mixed anthology, lots of different types of writing, styles of writing. Um, I think there might even be some illustrations in this. I thought it was fantastic and one of the things that I really rated about it was the kind of range of um, experiences of autistic people that's kind of shown in this anthology. I spoke about this one in my 12 books by autistic writers um, but yeah it does still come in with the underrated book recommendations so it's published in 2020 in April and it has 189 ratings but a very high average rating so 4.3 average rating which I think is very high indeed. The next book is self-published which might explain why it has a little bit less uh, ratings but it's one of my favourite non-fiction books from last year. Here is Breakfast at Bronzefield by Sophie Campbell. This is the story of Sophie Campbell, it's a pseudonym, um, and Sophie is um, British and um, went to prison um, and it's about her experiences in Europe's largest prison and I think it really shines a light on what prison is like for women and the kind of experiences that can happen to women on an everyday basis and the realities of prison of being in prison as a, as a woman um, and I thought it was really fascinating. I have worked in prisons, in women's prisons, um, before moving to Iceland. That was my job. Um, not as a guard. I wasn't a guard, but I worked for third sector organisations in prisons. What I valued a lot about this is Sophie kind of bringing her own lived experience to the table and I really feel like for the criminal justice to system to improve in any sense it really needs to take on board the lived experiences of people with convictions um, and so I think this is a valuable piece of work and a lot of people who are in any way interested in the criminal justice system should definitely read it. The next one on this list is another YA so it's Sunny and Me by Ross Sayers. This is written entirely in Scots so um, some kind of English language first readers might find it difficult to read, I'm not sure. Um, obviously I'm Scottish so it's not that bad for me. I totally understand it but it might be trickier if you don't know Scots very well. But this is a fantastic book. Um, it's set in a high school in Scotland and it follows uh, two young boys who are friends and the kind of mischief and adventure they get up to every kind of day. It really reminded me of my high school experiences and growing up in Scotland and really kind of took me back there. It's very funny. Uh, Ross Sears has a kind of very funny way of writing and sense of humour. He's a very funny person to follow on social media as well. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this. And I should say as well that there is a kind of mystery through this and the and the two friends are trying to work out what's going on. And um, yeah, it's very kind of gripping from that sense as well. So yeah, I really, really rated this one, really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars um, and thought it was really funny and engaging. It came out in 2019, published by Cranachan Public which is a um, Scottish publisher and it only has 118 ratings so very underrated in my opinion but I think this is one that especially if you have in your life anywhere um, Scottish young people I really feel like that's one to kind of put into their hands because I really feel like for me it was a very validated I, feel, I felt validated and kind of seeing Scots in print gave me a kind of or gave the language a kind of legitimacy which I kind of had always downplayed um, in my mind and just kind of thought about it as like an accent or yeah it kind of gave, it gave me a, a sense of confidence about Scots and about kind of the language that I was brought up around um, and yeah it really it was a very um, positive experience reading that for me really really enjoyed it. Now we have another anthology and this one is published by Coma Press it's part of their Reading the City series which if you don't know is like a um, collection of books which um, are anthologies from writers from specific cities um, or countries and they write about different stories that are set within that city. Um, the book that I'll recommend is The Book of Shanghai. Um, I really liked it. It was really like varied as well, like lots of kind of some kind of 
magical realist or supernatural sciencey stuff and then other more kind of grounded everyday stories and um, really engaging different stories every time really brought the, the city to life for me um, and yeah I thought it was brilliant so yeah I would really recommend that I want to pick up more of their Reading the City series um, and I'm looking forward to reading the book of Reykjavik which comes out um, in August this year. So I should say as well that came out in 2020, October 2020 and has 32 ratings so um, could definitely do with a little bit of love. And the final book on this list actually has more ratings. I've messed up this kind of order. Oops, oh well. Anyway, um, this one is called Simona Still Single by Lisa Bent. You'll have remembered me talking about this probably for the last few videos by now. I um, really, really like this post by Jacaranda Books as part of their 20 and 2020 series. It follows um, Simona, who is 37, Jamaican-British, living in London, trying to find her um, perfect kind of uh, person or not perfect person but somebody who can be her life partner she's quite kind of clear about who she wants to be her life partner what she's looking for in a partner she wants to have children and that's a big focus for her and yeah we just follow her and her kind of journey it's a it's a romance it's built as a romance but I would say it's not like a traditional romance and it's much more about Simona and her personal journey in self-discovery and self-exploration. I thought it was beautiful. I loved following Simona on this journey. At the end I just felt like an overwhelming sense of emotion at like all that she'd been through and all that um, she was kind of coping with and yeah just I thought it was really just such a journey to go on with a character. It came out in 2020, obviously, as part of their 20 and 20 series, and it has 47 ratings. Um, fantastic book, though, really would recommend it. Um, I don't know how more people haven't picked up. I'm quite disappointed by that. But yeah, so definitely lots of books which need a bit more love and which I think lots of people would really enjoy. Either they've not had maybe the same marketing attention or I'm not sure um, what it is that why people haven't picked them up, but I thought they were all brilliant. We'd really recommend them all. Let me know if you've read any books on this list, what you thought of them, and if you have any recommendations for me of books that you never hear talked about or you think should be talked about more, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. So for now, that's everything for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in my next one.